Hi, I'm Dustin with Industrial Equipment Company, and today we're going to be going over the testing and troubleshooting of uh, flame safeguard controls, specifically the Honeywell 7800 series. Um, it's important to note that uh, these testing services are offered at all of our Texas locations, whether it be uh, Houston, Beaumont, San Antonio, or Dallas, uh, any one of those places. Bring your control in and test it to help you figure out what's going on with your system. Uh, before we start testing controls, let's uh, take a little bit and go over tester itself, what it does, how it works, and uh, what that means for the troubleshooting side of things, okay? Essentially, what this tester does is it creates the ideal burner startup sequence, okay? It's absolutely perfect in every way, and that's good for us two reasons, okay? Put that in there, customer brings it in, we put it in, they know it's having a problem, it's been locking out of a specific area. We run it, it runs perfect, there's nothing wrong. Okay, then we know that the problem lies in their gas train, one of their, or in their burner itself, somewhere in there, and we can start beginning to help them figure out what they need to fix there. If it does the same lockout here, we know that a component of the, of the safeguard itself has been uh, fried in some way, and we need to replace it. And so we can start doing that, and we can help them get what they need and get out the door and on their way, finish their job. Um, let's take a look at this. Now, this particular tester is special in the fact that it can test both primary and programming controls. Uh, even with the older Honeywell that I've got over here and with the FireEye here, uh, you can only test primaries in one control and programming controls in another tester here. So what we've got here is this can do both. And the reason it can do that is because of these configuration plugs. Each of these configuration plugs is for a different uh, style of the 7800 series, whether it's a uh, primary and each of them is clearly marked on which ones that they can test. And as you can see here, we've also written on them in Sharpie to make a, <laughs> finding it a little bit easier. So what that does is makes it so you can test both styles in one tester. Um, go ahead and take a look at how we've got our switches set up. So flame mode, you're going to keep an auto. Over here you've got your shutter, you want that off. Uh, manual open valve switch, we want that turned on. Low fire switch, we need set to auto. High fire switch, we need set to auto. And uh, down here we got the burner switch, needs to be set to on. Control limits on, pre-ignition interlock on, and interlock itself set to auto. Now I keep a uh, pilot valve hold and, v and valve proving switch in the offs unless I know for a fact that I've got valve proving. Now there are other configurations that we can do for this for other controls, but we're going over today the most common and the way you're gonna to wanna to keep this set up on a daily basis because you're not gonna see those others as much, okay? Now let's talk about uh, flame simulator here. You can set it when they come in you need to take a look and make sure you know what kind of uh, flame amplifier card they have because that's going to tell you what type of scanning they have. Um, it can be set in infrared, which the scanner looks for the visible, I mean the light and the infrared frequency from the flame, UV, obviously ultraviolet, rectification, which is your flame rod, and then optical, which searches for the flame by looking in the visible light, light spectrum that we know is produced by fire. Okay, and now all of that Send the signal back to here so that the control knows that flame is present. Okay, now that we've talked about the tester, let's actually talk about testing the controls. Uh, first things first, all of our testing today we're going to be using the S7800A1142 keyboard display module. This is an absolutely essential tool. Uh, and I recommend that uh, all of our contractors keep one in their truck and all of our customers buy one of these to keep with them. It's expensive, but it tells you the lockout, what time it locked out, and just keeps you apprised of everything that's going on with your burner system. Really, you can't operate without it. Okay. The first control we're going to be testing is uh, automatic primary control, or the RM7890-1056. And this is for automatically fired on-off single burner applications that do not have a purge time. So there's no need for it to have a timing card in here, okay? Also notice that there's these jumpers here, and most of the uh, controls are going to have these jumpers like this, but they're all different. And how you clip or leave them intact 
changes different things within the system itself so that you can customize it for your burner specifically. Uh, in this case, with jumper one being intact on this one, we have to use a flame card with 0.8 second flame fail response time. Uh, of course, if you clip the jumper, you can use a regular one. All right, let's go ahead and put our flame card in. Notice that I have a slot here for it. Slides into that slot, in, and locks back. All right, and it comes out the exact same way. First few times you do this, you're probably going to feel like you're going to break it. You're not. Pull firmly, and it comes right out. No issues whatsoever. So before we hook this up, let's make sure we've got the right configuration plug in place. This one is specifically for the 7890-1056. So put it in there. Make sure we're set to rectification because I'm using a rectification amplifier. Go ahead and put our display module on. Plug it in. And start it up. In initiation mode, the operating control is called for heat and it's getting started up here. Safe start check. It's now checking its own internal circuits, make sure everything is working fine. And then it opens the pilot, lights the pilot, opens the main, lights the flame off the pilot, and we are now in run mode. And as you can see, that happens very, very quickly. Um, bring the camera up here now, and I'll run it through one more time so you can see just how fast this goes. Initiation mode. We'll safe start check. And there you have it. The moment of initiation for the pilot flame establishment period two, it being in run with the main lit is that long. And it is the quickest, most basic of the uh, controls and uh, pretty well self-explanatory as far as that's concerned. So at this point, we will probably move on to our next segment. Okay, moving on to the 7890. The next control we'll be testing is an RM7895A 1014. It is also a primary control, but it is a step up on the safety ladder and that it has a pre-purge in this case where you put a timing card and put it here. For expediency's sake, uh, we're going to be using a 10 second timing card for this one. We're going to make it in various times, up to several minutes. Slide that in there. We're good to go. Of course, this one doesn't require that we use a 0.8 second flame fill response time flame amplifier, so we'll be using a 2 to 4 second ultraviolet amplifier for this one. Snap that into place. Put our display back on. Over here. Make sure we're set to UV on the flame simulator. And I have the proper configuration plug in place here. 7895. Let's load it up. Solidly. Start it up. We are in initiation mode. The operating control has called the heat and flame and it's starting up. On to our purge time. As I said before, it's going to go for 10 seconds. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Pilot trial for ignition. Also, it's going to be 10 seconds. Our strong flame signal has lit the main, and now we are into run. Now, uh, come up a little closer here so you can take a look. We are going to put this over in standby for a second. And how did 
start it back up. Purge time is on. We've got the flame turned off. We're going to simulate not being able to light the boiler. Okay, we'll pilot trial for ignition. It will go for 10 seconds, and if it never sees a flame inside that 10 seconds, it will lock out. Now we have lockout 28 has occurred. Pilot flame fail. Additional time of lockout. Pilot ignition. 10 seconds. Okay. It's at this point, the customer will bring this in going, hey, we're getting this lockout here. But uh, I would ask him at that point, can you confirm that you have flame? Uh, if he tells me that yes, he can visually con he has been able to visually confirm that he has flame and it's still locking out like this, then we will test, switch out his amplifier card, because that's going to be the first thing I'm going to assume will be a problem. And go ahead and turn this off. Say that we have replaced the amplifier card for him. We're going to run it back through. Now when it comes back on, the lockout's still going to be there, so we need to hit the reset button. Hit the reset button and it will start the purge time. Nine, ten. Of course, now we have strong flame signal. So in that scenario, it was his flame card that was bad, and we've just solved his problem. And he can now purchase the flame card from us and be on his merry way. And we look like heroes. So, okay. Let's move on to our next flame safeguard here. We are moving on up the safety ladder to an automatic programming control. This one is the RM7840L1075. So not only does this have a pre-purge, it also has a post-purge and a few other noted little safety data ads that are working in the background. So, plug her up. Make sure we're in there good. Okay. We're set to UV because I'm using the same flame amplifier card that I used last time. I'm also going to be using the same purge timer, so 10 seconds. And I've got the right configuration plug in place. all the others. Initiation mode, the operating control is told that we need fire, so it's powering up into the safe state start check and onto the purge time that started the blower and is clearing out the burner chamber. Seconds. Onto pilot trial for ignition. Strong flame signal as it should. Main trial for ignition. And here in a second, we'll show a little bit of a difference here. And that it turns the pilot off to ensure that the flame that it is seeing is, in fact, the main burner. And now we are on to a run that it has established that we have solid flame signal. Now, come up here, I'm going to see what happens when. We have a f flame out during run. Okay. Turn the flame off. And lockout 17, main flame fail. It no longer sees a flame. It was in run. Of course, it gives you additional time of lockout. Run. And it was alarming. So, what we're going to do is we're going to shut it down. Okay. And let's go ahead and put this back in auto. Now this is usually the condition that it'll be in when it comes back, when they bring, when your customer brings it in. Okay, we've locked out. A lot of times I'll plug it in, turn it on, and it's still in lockout. Okay, so at this point what you need to do, because you're on the tester, you need to hit the reset button. And... It will start it over for you. Okay, I'll run it through. This time we'll let it go all the way through. Pilot 
trial for ignition. As you can see, strong flame signal. lit and now we are in a run okay so this has been running for a while we've achieved whatever needed to be achieved by turning the burner on so now the operating control says it's time to shut down so turn the burner off when we do that it goes into our post perch the burner's off it's going to Purge just like it did in the beginning, blowing a large volume of air through the burner chamber, clearing out anything that might still be there. And it's now into standby. In order for it to start again, all we have to do is turn this back on. I say the operating control says, hey, we need heat again. Let's go back on. This time, let's see what happens when we see a flame too soon. Okay, let's go lock out there as well. Purge and uh oh, there's still fire. Well, that's not good. So, right now we're at lockout 15, flame detected. Since we were in the purge, that's not good. We don't need any flame there because that's just before we turn the gas on. If there's flame there already when we turn the gas on, that could, uh, well, boom. So, it has rightfully locked up because it's detecting a flame. Of course, at this point, they would probably run some tests of their own. If that didn't work, then they would bring it into us for us to figure out, help them figure out what's going on. So let's put it down, put it back where it needs to be, and put it on, still in lockout, reset, and it starts the cycle all over again. This time it's not seeing a flame, so it will run through. to run, turn the burner switch off, and go back into our post purge. Okay, that uh, pretty well covers it for this control. Only uh, one other thing I'd like to mention, in the last two controls we've shown you, uh, simulated a couple of different uh, lockout scenarios where it has uh, turned it off and gone into a warm. And it tells you what that lockout is, but with every keyboard display, you get this. And in this is all of the fault codes that we were just dealing with, and then some. So if you've got this, or your customer has this, he can tell you what his lockout code was. And you can come into here, and you can look and see. Let's look at that last one. That was lockout 15. Land detected. Okay. If you've got that, now. Follow that over here, flame sense when no flame is expected during standby, or in the case of this, during the purge. Just uh, check that the flame is not present in the combustion chamber. It gives you, over here on the side, different things for the customer to check to make sure that uh, it is possibly this, okay? And go through, check that, make sure there's no flame present, make sure the flame amplifier and flame detector are compatible. Uh, you know, several different troubleshooting steps, and it's that way with every single one of the lockout codes, okay? This also, very, very useful. So, that concludes our video for today. Thank you for uh, taking the time to watch it. Uh, hope to do business with you soon. Have a great day.